This video introduces the new features for Lumerical's 2016A release. This is available as of December 2015. We'll start by going over the new features on the component design side. This includes a new heat transport solver, as well as several new features for our existing optical solvers. And after this, we'll go over the new features for the system and circuit design. We'll start by going over our current product portfolio for component design. For optical simulations, we have FTTT solutions and mode solutions. And we have the charge transport solver and device, which can simulate the electrical properties of semiconductors. And the combination of optical solvers and the charge transport solver allows us to simulate optical electronic or photosensitive devices. And with the new release, we'll introduce a new heat transport solver for solid state devices. And uh, as you'll see later on, this complements the other solvers very nicely and allows us to address a wide range of applications that require multi physics. The heat transport solver simulates the movement of heat through solids. And this heat transport can be thermally or electrically driven. And some of the features include an adaptive finite element mesh, which automatically refines based on the geometry or the material properties. Uh, the solver can also be ran in both steady state and transient mode with time varying waveforms. And also supports common boundary or interface conditions such as uniform temperature and power, heat flux, convection, and radiation. One important point is that uh, the, the heat transport solver shares the same design environment with Lumerical's charge transport solver. So both of them are part of the device, and the user has the option to license them separately. Combining with Lumerical's optical solvers, the heat transport solver can simulate a large variety of optothermal effects. And to make it easy to exchange data between the two types of solvers, we've added a new index perturbation material, which automatically converts the temperature profile into a spatially varying refractive index profile. The workflow is demonstrated in the link that's provided here. And uh, this is an example of a thermally tuned waveguide. And um, in this case, we want to start by calculating the temperature distribution in the heat transport solver. And we can see the, the temperature distribution here, where a wire is used to heat up the waveguide. And we can convert this temperature map into a perturbation to the optical refractive index. And then we can calculate the optical response using Mode Solutions Eigenmode Solver. And here we have the result, uh, which is a change in the phase as a function of input power. And we can see that for this waveguide, we get about a pi phase shift at 28 milliwatts. Another example is plasmonic heating. And uh, here we want to simulate the heat generation in plasmonic nanostructures, and it's induced by light absorption. So here we'll start with uh, FDTD simulation to calculate the optical absorption profile. This absorbed power is then used at the input heat source in the heat transport simulation. And here you can see that the simulation mesh automatically adapts based on the geometry as well as the import heat profile. And then we can run the heat transport simulation to calculate the temperature profile uh, for this structure. For more information on the thermal solver and other examples, I encourage you to attend our upcoming webinar on December 9th and 10th of 2015. If you're not able to make this time, you can also watch the recording at the link that's listed here. So in addition to the heat transport solver, we've also added a number of new features to our optical solvers. One of the main features is a significant improvement in the way we simulate broadband response in FDTD solutions. For periodic structures such as gratings, photonic crystals, CMOS image arrays, or solar cells, we've introduced a broadband fixed angle source technique, or BFAST, which allows users to inject a plane wave at a fixed angle over a broad spectrum. For non-periodic structures, we've also introduced a broadband beam source, which allows to, uh, the user to inject the focus beam at a fixed angle over a broadband spectrum. Both techniques make it much more efficient to simulate broadband results compared to before. And we'll go over an example for each. So for periodic systems like the grading you see here, we used to have to use block boundaries which means that we have to simulate one wavelength at a time for any non-zero angle of instance. 
With BFAST, we can obtain the broadband response for each angle in one simulation. And this makes it very efficient to run angle, angle sweeps and get results such as the one you see here. And this is a reflection of the grading as a function of angle and wavelength. And this used to take uh, much longer to run. And when the system is not periodic, a focused beam source can be used. So example we see here is a Gaussian beam injected at an angle, and there's an interface here which will lead to some reflections. In the previous version of FDT solutions, when you run a broadband simulation, you'll see that the actual angle of injection will change as a function of frequency. And you can see that in the top row here. With a new broadband beam, you can simulate a broadband focus beam fixed at an angle. And you can see from the bottom row here that the angle here does not change as a function of the frequency. Another important feature I want to mention for the optical solvers is the ability for a user to define a spatially varying anisotropic optical media. This gives a user complete freedom to define an arbitrary spatially varying unitary transformation to the permittivity de tensor. It allows us to simulate applications such as ferroelectric materials, magneto optics, electroabsorption, and many others. So now into the new features for system and circuit design. For system and circuit design, we have Interconnect. This is our photonic integrated circuit simulator. And together with our design automation partners, including Mentor Graphics, Phoenix Software, and the latest edition, Cadence, we offer a complete design framework for optical and electrical system design. Our knowledge base also has a lot of examples of component level simulations and the subsequent parameter extraction to create compact models. These compact models can then be used for system modeling and interconnect. The 2016A release also includes a number of new features for Interconnect. So first we have optical spice netlist export and import, integration with Cadence Virtuoso, improved simulation and design environment, as well as enhanced and extended element library. For a complete list of new features, please refer to our knowledge base. So new version Interconnect 5.5 was extended to allow for native exporting and importing of optical spice netlists, enabling schematic-driven layout and layout-driven schematic within the traditional EDA design flow. Additional supported spice commands include lib, model, param, include, and step. The new numerical cadence interface lets you design a photonic circuit within the virtual so framework. So starting with a schematic capture in virtual so schematic editor, Electrical and optical circuit simulations can now be set up in the analog design environment. And the simulation results can be analyzed in Viva, the Cadence wave view, Waveform Viewer. The Lumerical Mentor Graphics interface has also been updated to not only allow users to create, the, create and define photonic circuits and run the simulation directly from within Pixis Schematic, but also do a parametric analysis of design parameters. The new simulation deadlock resolution algorithms allow for ignoring, identifying, or resolving simulation deadlocks, preventing the introduction of unnecessary single time step numerical delays. And new properties, library, and model provide compact model developers the ability to categorize models and libraries. Lookup tables now support direct mapping and interpolation between arbitrary number of design and extracted parameters. It also includes a reading of the interpolated optical import S parameters and frequency or time domain tables. X and Y physical layout coordinate properties are now supported by each element in Interconnect, providing support for layout and geometry dependent effects such as temperature and process variations. The Interconnect design environment has been further improved by giving the user the choice between Manhattan or direct connection routing. Furthermore, Zoom with the mouse wheel is now supported, as well as Zoom Select with right click. The new piecewise linear export and import elements allows for the exporting and importing of piecewise linear time-dependent electrical waveform, enabling file transfer and code design with third-party EDA tools. Data DLN elements was extended to support bidirectional behavior. These specialized elements allow 
user defined control over simulation deadlocks, preventing introductions of unnecessary single time step numerical delays. The script element now supports structure objects to manipulate digital, electrical, and optical signals, reducing the number of required functions and greatly simplifying the process of writing time domain scripted elements. The waveguide element models were extended to include sensitivity towards temperature for properties such as the effective index and excess loss for each of the waveguide modes. This allows the incorporation of thermal effects into waveguide propagation transfer function. The same idea can also be applied for different couplers and resonators. For more information on the 2016A release, please visit our website at www.lumerical.com. Thank you for watching this video.